Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1 on this here channel. And if it's your birthday, I wanna wish you a very special happy birthday. Today's topic is about another movie I watched. Uh, this one is called A Faster Horse, and it's about basically the production of the Ford Mustang. Uh, more specifically, it follows the production of the 2015 Mustang, which I believe was like the 50th anniversary of the Mustang. So in some ways, it's kind of an ad for Ford, but the reason I bring it up here today is because it covers a lot of the points that I've touched on in the past and in other videos about engineering and specifically engineering of automobiles. A couple of things in particular, just all the little moving parts, all the different people that are involved in something like this. The movie spends a lot of time following around the project manager, the guy that's head of the whole thing, who uh, has to make all the decisions. And as I said, it, it really illustrates a lot of the points that I brought up in the past. And one of the main ones is cost. Uh, some of you have it in for engineers, and, and I get it, you know, I've, anybody that's worked on anything would have a problem at some point, I think, with something that was engineered in a, in a certain way. Maybe they didn't give you enough clearance to get to something, or, you know, they just made it difficult, or it seemed like they engineered it to fail, and we touched on that in planned obsolescence. All that aside, uh, in this, it, it goes through all those nitty gritty details all the way down to the date of production, and it covers all those processes, all the decisions that need to be made, and it, and it perfectly illustrates some of the things that I've brought up in the past. Things like uh, the cost of one little part that's like $1.30 or something like that, and it doesn't seem like a lot. But the engineer even says it, and I've said this in my own videos, he says take $1.30, multiply it times 10,000 units times five years, and that adds up. So even a few pennies here and there, you know, if you, if you change the materials on something, just a few pennies here and there really add up over the lifespan of a production of a vehicle. I feel like I was spot on in pointing this out in the past because, as I said, they, they talk about it directly in the video. Also, things like, you know, they, they test it, they drive it, they test it, they, they try to work out all the bugs before it actually gets into your hands so they don't have to deal with issues later. And I mean, they literally took it down to the wire. Uh, I think uh, on the last day before they were supposed to go into production, there was like a millimeter on the drive shaft that wasn't quite right that they had to work out in order to get the, the vehicle to production. Because you got to think, it's not just you know, one, one part or the other. It's a collection of parts that all have to work together. And each one of those parts has to be manufactured separately. And then they have to come up with a process of putting it together. So there are several different facets and several different aspects to this that come into play. Which, which make it an interesting challenge. You start with an idea, then you get a bunch of materials, and then you've got a, a cost per unit that you have to hit. You have to hit that target, because anything over that, well, you're over budget. Anything under, it's not gonna work. So it's, it's this delicate balance that they walk throughout the entire film that they talk about. It. They also talk about the history of the Mustang and how it came into being, a little bit about Lee Iacocca, uh, is also in there. Another point that they bring up, which I've sort of touched on in the past, is that um, an auto manufacturer, say like Ford in this case, doesn't make all the parts for the vehicle. They engineer the specs, and then they send it out to third parties in order to have them make those parts. They make those parts, and then they send them to the, to the assembly plant so that they can put the whole thing together. So really, Ford is only making like the engine and the transmission, but many, many of the other parts, almost all the other parts, maybe body, body panels, things like that, are all made by third party people. And for those of you that look back on the bailout, of General Motors and Chrysler uh, a few years back, you look at that and you, and you become a bit resentful, but you need to really consider, okay, you lose all those jobs at Chrysler, you lose all those jobs at General Motors, and then there's all those people that have been supplying General Motors and Chrysler all these years that suddenly lose all that business. So the hole is way bigger than just the companies that are in the crosshairs. And, and this movie also points that out, is that they're assembling the vehicle. They don't make each and every part. They, like I say, engineer it to spec, and it gets down to the wire. I mean, literally down to the last day before production, before the thing launches, uh, they are working on it night and day. The point being is just take into consideration all the effort that went into making that vehicle. A lot of people came together, you know, including all the people on the assembly line, and then there's the sales department at the dealership and the service department and everything else. And it starts with those engineers that come up with those ideas in the design department that uh, and bring these things to life. And I think the movie A Faster Horse really illustrates a lot of that process. 
I enjoyed it. I'm not going to say you know it was so riveting as <laughs> it was so great. No, it's 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 like I said, in some ways, almost like a commercial for Ford. I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to uh, the film so that you can check it out for yourself. I watched it on Netflix, so you know you should be able to find it there or someplace. And check it out for yourself and see what you think. I look forward to your comments down below. I'll also put a link in the description to a discussion about this video over at ericthecarguy.com. Speaking of ericthecarguy.com, uh, if you have automotive questions, I ask that you go there and use the resources there to get them answered. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, also Instagram. And I close each of my videos, including ETCG1s, with be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you for watching. See you next time. <laughs>